run number one sway bar is on two two Hey YouTube, this is Tom. Welcome back to the car journey. Just uh, wrapping up another event with the Civic Type R. So we took it out to an SECA two-day autocross up in Farmington, New Mexico. And we were trying to see how the changes we had made from the last uh, time we were in the garage here, you know, affected it, see if we did any better. So the major change, we're still in SECA B Street, but we changed from the uh, RS RV6 uh, sway bar to a carceps, it's the 188 uh, thickness of wall tubular sway bar. And we started on the 2.2 out of two out of four settings, uh, sorry, four hole settings. So 2.2, and that's about 100 and I think 30 pounds of rate at the bar. And so it definitely was noticeable. It, so I don't know if they measured the same because uh, that's a very subtle change at the actual wheel. It shouldn't have been that noticeable. It should have been pretty subtle, but it was very noticeable. And so, in fact, so much so you saw in the intro that uh, I looped it. And that's a pretty rare thing for me, especially on run one. But a combination of events of it, it was a drying course. If you noticed, if you go back and watch it, right where I put the left side tires when I make the first right input, there's a puddle. And I have the outside rear tire in that puddle at the moment I load it up and all these factors together and went right around. So um, it had me second guessing myself, but I decided just to stick with it. And so uh, I'd gone out with slightly lower rear pressures to make it okay, so I thought. So um, part of the motivation switched the bars, I wanted to up my front pressures. I really didn't feel like 27 was gonna give me the longevity I want. I wasn't even sure that's the right contact patch I want in terms of you know, deforming with such low pressure. So we went up to 32 pounds in the front and we ended up staying there all weekend. So that's the good news. In the back, I went out on cold runs both days at uh, 38 PSI and I could tell a difference on, in this case, run number two in the morning. But on Sunday, same thing, I went out 38 PSI. The car did not catch me out. I was very fast on my first run. And then I went ahead and turned up um, the pressure. I ended up, so I still ended up at 48 rear. It just feels good. Car breaks away very progressively. I can control it. I can use it. And uh, the car sips bar was money. In fact, I kind of wanted just a little more rotation. So we'll get into that in a minute. So let's go ahead and run um, day one's best run. So that's day one and uh, you can see cars working pretty good. I seem to be adapting pretty well to everything and we ended up uh, with a pair of seconds. So second in pro class, uh, lost out by something like 28,000. So I'll comment exactly what it was uh, to, to Paul on his STR Miata, which is always a good car for packs anywhere. And then on uh, overall packs, I ended up that fastest run ended up being 18 thousandths uh, out of first place for, for top packs. So that was a bummer, but overall we're feeling pretty good because again, this is not necessarily maybe the car to have for B Street. That remains to be seen. Um, so maybe it's not maximizing the packs like a super would, but either way, it's still feeling pretty good. The car was good. And like I said, now I've learned a few things about adjustment and the next day it's gonna be, it's gonna be dry. And so there's less, less learning curve there. So let's go ahead and run our day two best clip now.
Yes! And Finally! Down to a 37, Woo! Finally. Clearly something happened on that run. And there you have day twos and you see the car is working again very well. Really easy to drive. There's not a lot of like flicking catching. It's, it's pretty predictable. And so that run on the other hand now was good enough for uh, top packs and an earlier run was good enough for uh, a pro class win. So the car took first in both the overall and in class on Sunday. It's working great. I'm really feeling comfortable. Margins aren't very big. I think top packs was just over two tenths. And uh, I think pro class win wasn't, wasn't much more than that. Um, so we're, we're right there in the mix. We're fighting, which is fun. Uh, just want to find a little more time. So I've now come back and because we've had an event, things have loosened up. So this car steps bar is making noise and, and Brian has a nice little um, guide. So if you have some noise, you just go through it and kind of, and in my case, it's been the end links, the, the jam nut, on the end links themselves where you set the height and the clocking and then you put those jam nuts they're kind of hard to do and so and also maybe i was a little timid not to over torque them and so uh reclocked the the driver's side end link fixed it hopefully the noise is gone for good uh check the collars again everything looks good so it's probably just that and uh yeah well we went to two three since i since i was under the car We'll go to two, three, which is now another significant jump in force. This will be a major change. So this might force us to bring the rear tire pressure back down to adjust the car so that we have a chance at, you know, a car that's going to work. Uh, sorry, just adjusting the screen. A car that's really going to work well for us um, in all conditions. And so um, we'll see how it goes. But that's so far. Next event's going to be the, the Supra over there. Made some changes to it, um, really minor. The biggest thing is gonna be drivability. I need to I need to learn to drive it better in second gear out of some of the slow corners because the way I have my tuning is I don't get max torque in second gear until it's really high in the RPM and doesn't matter. And so I've been short shifting the third, which actually gives, you know, defeats the purpose of what I've done with my tune. And so the problem I'll have is that I'll go to third, I get all 530 wheel torque at once, light up the tires at about, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour, which is not what I'm looking for. So I need to ride out second all the way to all the way out to 50. And so I've installed a dauntless LED shift light right there on the dash hood. And I'm hoping that that'll encourage me to ride out second gear so I won't be as intimidated of running out and hitting the, the rev limiter and losing time that way. So next, next video you'll see will be on the Supra, but for now, Civic Type R is working well. In uh, three weeks, we have an event with it again at Farmington. It'll be a little hotter and uh, we'll see how it goes. I just wanted to show you one other thing while I'm got you here. And that is how we're doing with tire wear. So um, I'm sure you're kind of curious. So if you look at it, this is the rears, even running that very high pressure, 48 pounds, we're still getting, you know, edge wear because there's just not much rear camber in a stock Civic. And these top two tires here are the rears. And the fronts, you can see we're holding off pretty well. I mean, both front outside edges are looking pretty good. So. This is not a car that's gonna be like the old days where you got you know, 25 runs, 20, 25 runs flip and do the same thing. So we're well into the 50s in terms of runs and uh, I'm not looking like I need to buy tires uh, for the next event. So I'm gonna try and go one more and then if, if anything, I might switch to a pair. I might try switching out the rears here and putting 275s, fresh 275s on the front, the old 275s on the rear and trying to square set up as that's kind of the goal of where I'd rather be just because utility wise, it makes sense to keep switching out pairs of, of front 275s than having bespoke uh, set up like this and the 245s can't really do anything for me. So we'll see how it goes, but I just want to get a little update on tire wear and uh, I think that's all I've got for you. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below and we'll see you in the next video. Till then, have fun.